How's it going, guys? Central Coast Disc Golf and Dynamic Discs are bringing you some more disc golf action. As always, Dynamic Discs is sponsoring a Dynamics giveaway, so make sure to like and comment on YouTube for a chance to win. Speaking of DD, gotta love them for sponsoring Central Coast Disc Golf and giving away all those free Dynamics discs. Super nice of them. Uh, but anyway, let's watch the disc golf. How's it going, guys? Ian here from Central Coast Disc Golf. Unfortunately, no Kevin today. What we've got for you guys today is the 2014 Wintertime Open. And I have a recap video of uh, all three rounds and the final nine. I've, I've picked a card to follow uh, the first round, and then I followed the lead card on the last two rounds of the final nine. And uh, so I thought I'd just do a little recap video and kind of give you guys some, show you the highlights, some low lights, some of the key shots. And uh, we're starting off on hole three here, 502 foot par four. Give you a look at the basket. There's a Bombarica right there. And uh, Kyle Ekman is a lead off right here. This hole's really open and then it kind of pinches down. And I saw a lot of different shots. There's Kyle through the uh, kind of Annie backhand up the middle. And uh, Simon Lazat on the box right now. And he lays down a sick looking roller. And that thing is working. Feeding right towards the pin. He fishes about, I want to say, 35, 40 feet short of the pin, right on line. And up next is uh, Alex Johnson at a pretty close to a Denver, Colorado, just a little bit west of there. And he is the uh, Kevin Estrada of the group, <laughs> solely forehand, but he, a real nice forehand. And a good looking shot there, just to uh, hit that tree, unfortunately. And, uh, stepping up here is Steve Rico, legacy disc co owner. Really awesome disc golfer, super nice dude. And it looks like he's trying to throw the roller as well, but that one. Lands it just uh, not the right angle. Kind of just cut rolls off to the left. There's actually an, uh, an uh, alley over there. It's not too terrible. Up next, Garrett Tapkin out of San Diego, California. Really solid player. Throws really far. And he took that huge sky anti route through a big old hyzer flip out there. And I got some trees. but uh... So here we are looking at Simon for Eagle. Bang, bang. <laughs> Not a bad way to start off your tournament with an eagle. Uh, we're looking at hole two here. We're looking at Kyle Ekman throwing a forehand. And this one's uphill, big dog leg right from the perspective. And he misses all the trees and parks it. The basket is in a really interesting spot. This is a, this is Simon coming back for par. And you can see the basket just like in the middle of all those trunks. And he was trying to shoot a window and got denied, unfortunately. On to hole three, Steve Rico's on the box, and uh, this has, is an island hole, so most of the players were just laying up through that window that Steve just took. That's a beautiful shot right there. And then you can see the pin sit on that little island. And it's actually a little better to be over to the left, because you can just slide it across the pavement like Steve does, instead of <laughs> worrying about getting denied by those uh, rocks. Oh, sorry, that was hole five. We're on a hole six here. This is a huge par four. The basket's way down there somewhere. There's kind of two fairways. There's one right here, and there's the one that starts up a little bit and about 100 feet to the right. And most of the players were just thrown out towards that window. It's actually better to be off to the left than to the right, so you can uh, get it on the trees on your second shot. But Simon has a cannon. <laughs> he just throws a huge hyzer over all the trees. Absolutely beautiful drive. You see it come down right there. Just a bomb. And uh, here's Simon with a second shot in the same hole. Throwing just a huge hyzer again over the trees. Faded in towards the basket beautifully. Him and Paul Macbeth were just dropping huge bombs all weekend. Really amazing shots. Moving on to the next hole, Kyle Ekman on the box. This one's just about 315, I want to say. Just a nice, easy backhand hyzer. And the pin's kind of on this ridge. Alex looks like he's going to rip out another forehand. Throw a nice sky anti fuck shot. That one finished uh, pretty close to the basket. Here we're looking at Kyle's putt for birdie. Nice work, man. And I'm uh, moving on hole eight, another par four, and this is another one where Simon and Paul were going over the top. And the, this is a really interesting hole. There's a mando. It's a big, huge dogleg left around a mando tree that's about 400 feet out of the fairway. And 
Simon and Paul were throwing these huge sky anti flex shots over the trees and around this mando. See it finished right there. <laughs> huge bomb. Just unbelievable. The spotter was a little confused, but that one made it around the mando tree. So here's Steve Rico. He's showing the line that most everybody else took with just like a low lizer, a low hyzer skip shot. And his came out a little high. And uh, so he's still got to go around the Mando, and you can see the, the basket off to the left with the cone on it. And Steve throws this sick backhand cut roller. Super creative. And that one didn't sit down quite soon enough, but he had a look for, for Brady. Finished with the par. Really cool shot, shot from there. And here you can see where Simon finished, and this is his eagle putt. Ooh, just give it a little much there. All right, he's going to raise the whole nine. 315, this is a pretty good dogleg right. And uh, the shot here is, I don't think you can see the basket, is a forehand, um, either a low skipper, or uh, Paul Macbeth was throwing this really high anti-flex shot that was working really well for him. And you see Kyle with the low shot, skipping beautifully towards the basket. Good, uh, good hole for Alex here. Get out his forehand. This one's getting a little high, it looks like. Yeah, it kind of got knocked down. And you can see where Kyle finished, tapping into Bird after a beautiful drive. And that's where he's hole 10, 518, par 4. This one's a huge bomb. Way out there, you can see the basket with the icon on top. And Simon is on the box. And he told me he did a 360 drive and practiced and crushed it 100 feet past the pin. And that one managed to hit the telephone wire. Oh my god, it was looking so good. Anyway, I think they uh, I think he still managed to save Bird. But uh, it's going to bring us to hole 11. Another par 4, 500 feet. And this one's slightly uphill. Uh, actually, it's pretty much even. But the pin is up on a hill at the end. You can see it with the flag there. And Kyle threw a really nice shot at it. Here's with the second shot. Just laying it for a nice bird. Bringing us to hole 12, 315. This one has some tricky OB. Um, there's usually a lake when there's water, but there's no water in California. So they put up the tape for the OB line. And you can see Kyle is throwing the... Uh, I think it was a putter at it. And the, the Nova, I want to say. There's Simon throwing a mid-range. Going right at the basket, begging for it to get down. Ooh, it goes a little long, but I think he did same bounds. Uh, Steve Rico stepping up here. Good looking pull from Steve. And part. Nice drive. Let's see if Gary can match Steve's shot. Good looking rib. Hangs it out just a little, little long, a little right. Alex throwing the forehand. Safe shot. Avoids the OB. Uh, brings us to hole 13, 458. This is a mean part of three. There is a right fairway and a left fairway that's pretty much just the road. So pretty much everybody's throwing a, an ante over the, that tree to get to the right fairway. And I think Steve hit that telephone pole. Maybe not. Kyle with his drive. Nice. Oh, yeah. He's, he's the one with the telephone pole. Unfortunate. Looking at Simon's drive right now. Heiser flipping. I believe that's actually a mid-range. And he just crushes this. That might be a PD. But you know, That was a beautiful drive. You can see where he finished. He's actually got a look at birdie, which is extremely rare on this hole. Tickle, tickle. <laughs> Hole 14, 292. Another par 3. This one has a Mando. Um, you got to go left of that tree with a tape on it. And then the basket's off to the right. Simon's often for the forehand, which works. I saw better results with the uh, an Annie backhand. Steve tries the forehand roller, but oh, hits the Mando tree and comes back. Unfortunate for him. I believe he picked up a bug on that one. 
Um, look, Simon's putt for birdie. I think he's in there. Nice putt. Good bird. A hole 15, 290. This one's pretty straight. If you go down the tunnel, it's straight, and then a little bit right, right by the bathroom. But Simon has a cannon, so he just throws a huge hyzer over it. And pretty close. <laughs> Kyle is taking the uh, more conventional route, which is a low forehand. Watching Simon throw it really uh, drove home a snap for me. He, he's really slow on his run up and then just explodes and just crushes him. Watching him throw is just amazing. Kyle came up a little short on that, but this is an Alex Johnson hole if I've ever seen one. And uh, squeaks it under the bush for a nice birdie look. Look at it, Simon's birdie putt. No worries for him. Uh, bringing us to hole 16, par 4, 434. This is a tough hole. A really tight window. You got to hit off the tee. And there's that Mando right there. Got to go right at that tree. And that's the perfect line that Simon hit right there. See if Kyle can copy him. Ooh, little right, but that one fought through really well. <laughs> Found a magic window. Looks like Kyle's throwing the Nova again. You can see the basket way off to the left. And that was a pretty nice up right there. I think he managed to get bird. Simon with his second shot. And again, you can see the basket off to the left. Give you a dollar. Ooh, given that eagle run, almost made it. Maybe he did get, did get the bird. Uh, hole 17, 318. This is another island uh, pin. There's a flagged off OB just short of the basket. So a lot of players were laying up, which is a smart shot. And uh, No shame in that. It looks like Simon's laying up right here. Kyle looks like he might be giving it a run. He kicked off the rocks back inbounds, I believe. Yep. So there you can see where the basket is. You can see kind of that OB river in between. So Kyle's a smart thing. Land it for par. Uh, brings the hole 18, 505. This is a tough, tough hole. You've got a Mandy left of that telephone pole, right of the tree past it. And then you need to take a huge dog leg left. And Simon threw a nice forehand. And that's kind of where you want to be, maybe a little farther to the left. Um, but not not bad at all. He made he made both mandos already. And Kyle is Heiser flipping a gator, a <laughs> champ gator. He said the thing is like eight years old or something like that. Just super beat up. But that was a really nice shot. Steve is throwing the forehand, like Simon, and ends up pretty close to Simon as well. I think the shot on this is a uh, an anti flex shot though. Just so you're a little closer to the pin. The pin's down where Steve's throwing. You can see it off to the left. And those. White mandos were not in play on this hole. There's the basket. Looks like Simon's lining up to throw another forehand at it. And he was telling me he, pretty much all his drivers are uh, C-Line PD-2s, if anybody's curious. Forehand, backhand, pretty much everything. Oh, hit a tree. Came a little short. See that second mando tree Kyle had to navigate around? Throwing a really beautiful backhand, and he is parked for a birdie. Unreal up. And now on hole one, and this is a big dog leg left, but you got around, go to the right of this big mando tree right here. And Kyle gets around it. And there's also OB in the road long. You can see the basket way over there to the left. And there's Simon. It's either a fairway driver or a mid range, I couldn't tell. But he made it work. Skipped around the tree beautifully. That is a tough, tough birdie hole. Kyle was telling me him and his brother both hit 80 footers for bird back to back last year of this hole. Unreal. All the dudes doing the last hole high five. And we're on to hole two. This has a couple different lines. Uh, it's 259. There's a little OB Creek just short of the basket. And you can take the uh, backhand hyzer line or hyzer flip line like Kyle right here, but it's pretty tight. Or there's the uh, forehand line, which you're going to see Simon take right here. And he came up a little short, but I believe he stayed in bounds. And Garrett Tapkin, I believe, taking the forehand line as well, it looks like. Ooh, 
crush that thing out there. Wow. Nice shot. Actually went a little bit long, but not bad at all. So you can see where Simon finished. And then we're looking at his birdie putt right here. No worries. All right, that is all of our first round action. After that, Philo shot a 51, Paul shot a 52, along with Kyle and Simon, and then Nico came in with 53. So that is going to be our card for the second round. And we are starting off on hole two, Philo Brothwaite on the tee, throwing the forehand. Looking pretty bueno. Parked, man. Really nice shot from Philo. Kyle Ekman is on the box, and he's throwing the uh, flex backhand line, and ooh, catches a nasty tree kick. Like Simon taking that forehand line again. It's working. Yep, I'll have a putt for Bird. It's going to be right back at the OB, but it's, it's there if he wants it. And uh, we have a, a McBeast sighting. Throwing the forehand as well. Oh, came up just a little short, and he actually did stay in bounds. You got the the world champ roll, and here's Nico the Castro throwing the backhand. He gets a nasty kick. So there's Macbeth inbounds, and so he took his three three feet in meter in or whatever. And we're looking at his birdie putt. Ooh, uncharacteristic uncharacteristic miss. Uh, Philo taking advantage, taking his lead up at two. Bring us the whole three. It's that big uh, par four, five hundred footer. Philo takes the huge backhand ante line way out there. It's actually really open once you get past those first uh, trees, set of trees on that line. Really cool shot from him. Paul throwing a roller. Oh, looks beautiful. Fades out a little early, a little right, but that should be an easy birdie from him for there. Nico Le Castro on the box. Got on the backhand roller as well. Oh, unlucky tree kick. So Philo's second shot. He's probably about a couple hundred feet out. Rips out the forehand. Oh! <laughs> Nails the eagle. Sick shot. Oh, you gotta love the fairway ace. On to a uh, hole three here. Or, sorry, four. And Paul is ripping in backhand Annie. This is that one that's up by the bathrooms. And. Parked. Beautiful shot. Pretty sure that was a Casey Pro Rocky through right there. And uh, on to hole five. Nicola Castro's on the box. He's just trying to lay up. Oh. Took a nasty kick OB right there. Simon throwing the perfect layup shot here. Patrick Blazak takes a really cool line on this hole uh, later in the round, so I'll show you. Woo! <laughs> Nico with the scary upshot right there, and he manages to stay on the island. Again, we're not that. Huge par four, and Simon's throwing that huge hyzer bomb, but he came up short on this one and got stuck in the tree, unfortunately, and took a two-meter penalty stroke. It looks like Paul's going to do the same. He actually throws an anti-flex shot over the trees, unlike Simon, and he crushes this. And I think he actually went long OB into the soccer fields. <laughs> Unreal. Here's Simon to save par. Beautiful putt. And again, this is that easy backhand hyzer hole seven. And Paul's throwing a rock three, it looks like. And fades in right towards the basket. Kyle with a pretty long birdie putt here. Whoo, banged it. Nice work. Paul to match the bird. No worries there. On hole eight, another par four. This is the one with the Mando about 400 feet out. Big dog, le dog leg left. 
Nico taking the low line, although I, th I think he's got the power to go over the top. And he kind of landed behind that tree, not the best spot. And here's Paul taking that over the top line I was talking about. And he just booms it out there. I'm able to see it there. You can see it fade back in around the Mando. That was your TD, by, by the way, right there. Simon Lizotte with a huge hyzer bomb. Again, clears the Mando, no problem. These guys are putting on a show. Nico threw on the forehand to try to get around the Mando and close to the pin, and that was a nice shot right there. Paul has an eagle run. Alex, he's just laying up for a bird. Looking at Simon's eagle, eagle run right here. Not a bad up. Bring us the whole night, and Nico is throwing a sky backhand roller, but it hits a telephone pole behind that tree you can't see. Apparently he parked it like three or four times of practice right in a row. So here's that hole I was telling you, Macbeth takes the Annie flex shot, and uh, I don't know if you saw that finish, but it was it's parked. <laughs> Simon's taking the, the low forehand line, which also works. Oh, really nice shot. Kyle as well. Whew. He actually finished a little long, but not bad at all. Now you can see him. So went a little long coming back towards the basket for his bird. Oh, nice putt, Kyle. Simon has no problem with his birdie either. And uh, that's Paul's yellow disc. Parked. And that's where he's hole 11. This is that big 500-footer slide uphill. And watch the mat when Simon throws right here. You see it move? I'm not sure if that threw him off. Apparently that, that mat moved about three feet during the tournament. Uh, Nico is lining up for a 360 drive here. Oh, no. Just caught that tree coming out. And that's ring us hole 11 here. I'm oh, sorry, that last one was 10. This was another par 4. This is the one that's up on that little ridge. And Macbeth crushes a huge bomb. And this one that's got a little too much turn. Finishes pretty much pin high, like 60 feet right. Not a bad drive at all. And this is Macbeth's eagle putt. And he banged it. <laughs> huge putt. That was a scary putt, too. A bit of, bit of a death putt went from there. And a hole 12. This is the one with the OB short. And Macbeth throws a rock three. And he's under the basket. <laughs> Simon to match. Look how slow his run up is. And then just snap. Ooh, just short. Stays in bounds, though, which is nice. And uh, Philo is on the box here. Looks like he's got a uh, champ rock. In his hands. Good looking pull. Ooh, real close. And those were all birds. Nico Castro. I think he's actually throwing a fairway driver or a driver on this one. Yeah, he's just taking a bigger hyzer line though. But the dirt was really softer on the basket. It was pretty forgiving. Although not skipping out. Bring us to hole 13 is that big 460 foot par 3. And like I said, most of the guys are going up the middle, but Paul just throws this huge 460 foot backhand Annie that crashes into that tree and gives him this putt for birdie. Which he bangs because he's Paul Macbeth. What? I bet you that was the only birdie on that hole all weekend. Unreal. Uh, bring us to hole 14. Is that got to the left of the Mandy, pins off to the right. Simon's throwing that forehand again. And that, that looked pretty good again. And then we're looking at his birdie putt. Oh, just short. Gotta want it, Simon. <laughs> Hole 15. Baskets uh, up by the just in short right of those baskets. And again, Simon's taking that huge backhand hydro line. And this one comes up a little shorter than last time. You can see a finish there, but he's still actually got a birdie putt from there. Philo taking the more conventional route right up the middle. 
and gets a beautiful kiss towards the basket off that rock. Really nice. Paul threw on the forehand. And he, was, he told me he was actually trying to land right there. And then the hard dirt gets that skip towards the basket. Really nice shot. And there he just finishes out his bird. Uh, Simon missed that putt, but Philo didn't. Uh, another par four here. Hole 16. Ooh. Philo cut it a little wide, but still cleared the, the gap. And the pin's pretty much straight ahead, about 250. Philo lays down a beautiful up shot. Bring us to hole 17 at uh, Island Hole again. The uh, road's about, I don't know, 40 feet wide, just short of the basket. And McBeast is he's running towards the basket, no laying up here. And he made the island. He's going to have a birdie putt from there. So Simon takes a different shot than he did the first day here. He's taking a big Heisen line at it. And you can see it finished right there. And he is in the island safe. Oh, sorry, I lied. That was short. Ooh, he did stay in bounds there. And we're looking at McBeast birdie putt. Ooh, off the tree. Hole 18 again, double mando. Left of the first mando, right of the second one. And a big dog leg left after that. And Kyle is throwing that champ gator. And that's pretty much exactly where you want to be. Philo. I'm going to try and copy Kyle here. This is a tough hole. I know we got a lot of players. Oh no, Philo. Missed that Mando. Macbeth. Looks like he's throwing a Casey Pro Rock. Heiser flipping and getting that rock glide. Perfect turn. Yeah, that's pretty much where you're trying to be. Nico LeCastro, see if he can throw Paul shot. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, nice looking riff from Nico. So Philo from the drop zone. He's just trying to get past that. No, no, Philo. Didn't put himself in the best spot there. Um, look at Simon's second shot on this par four. Throw on the forehand. And not bad, just a little short right. Kyle with a similar look. Similar results. Macbeth also throwing a forehand. Big flex shot. That pop top star destroyer. And you see Philo, he kind of had it took a while figuring out what to do with that Mando tree. Ended up throwing the backhand that just didn't fade back for him. Uh, look at it, Nico's three attempt here. Oh, off the cage. Simon with his birdie putt. Philo with a par save attempt. Oh. Macbeth with a birdie look. <laughs> Nobody can putt on this basket. Oh, rough hole there. Uh, that's going to bring us to our last hole for this card, and that is hole one. And this is that big dog leg left, but you got to go right of that tree. And Kyle throws an unreal shot. <laughs> can you believe that? It was a beautiful drive by Kyle. Oh, the first round, I was telling Kyle, I was like, yeah, that, that hole's pretty much unbirdieable. And he's like, yeah, watch this. And then Paul does almost the same thing. Unbelievable shots by these guys. Simon with his drive. Oh, no, too much hyzer. Oh, he missed the Mando. Not what you're trying to do, finishing around. Rough break. Philo. Oh, no. Oh. Same thing. It was a tough course, it's, and it was a long day for these guys. Whew, nice birdie putt by McBeast. And an even better drive by Kyle leads to another birdie. All right, such a coast this and I caught up with Paul here. Paul McBeth after his second round at the... Uh, what tournament is this, Paul? Winter time open. Winter time open in Pasadena, California. How's the course out there? 
Uh, the course is playing a little different this year. He tossed in some mandatories because he didn't like uh, a lot of these players going over the trees. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, it's making it change up a little bit. Any holes you like? Any holes you don't like? Um, I've always liked the two open ones out there where you can just bomb and crush it out shot. there. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm actually liking 18. You know, people, people are really hating it. He yeah. switched it, but it's not really affecting me. That's got that tricky double mando, right? Yeah, yeah. I get that McCrow Rock right through there. <laughs> nice, Pro man. Rock three. Any uh, holes you're playing differently tomorrow? Um, are you differently? Like no, I actually like what I'm doing. Uh, just a couple, I just got lazy. Uh -huh. um, took a five and two fours, just being lazy. But uh, got a lot of twos out there, so I can definitely shoot under. Awesome, thanks, man. You want to thank your sponsors or anything? Yeah, of course. I got to thank Innova Champion Disc, Crit Bags, and Crush Gloves. Cool, thanks for your time. All right, so yeah, after that, I caught up with Simon. Simon Lee's up after the second round of the Wintertime Open. Uh, how'd you play, Simon? Uh, I feel like I played pretty well. Yeah? First round was good, shot a 52. Second round, bad finish, just tired and not concentrated anymore. Got four fours for finishing. 36 holes is a long day. And then, yeah, I got a 56, which is still okay. My goal was to shoot 54s. Okay. So in total, it's it's all right. What do you think of the course? Uh, I don't really want to say anything bad about it, but <laughs> it's not my favorite. Yeah, some tricky bad Mandy's on us. Yeah. yeah it's, we call it frisbee golf, uh -huh. it's not disc golf anymore. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, any holes you're going to play differently tomorrow? Different shots, or you like you like what you're throwing pretty much? I pretty much like what I'm doing. Maybe hole 17. I I have to throw it harder. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow I want to throw it harder. Okay. How's how's Lua America, man? How you, how you like in the U.S.? It's amazing. Yeah. It's standing here in shorts and t-shirts for me is crazy, <laughs> and it's February. Gotta love it. So yeah, it's it's being a dream, and I hope it continues. Are you still trying to stay here all year? Or? Well, we're going to Japan okay. in July, in June, sorry, and doing the Scandinavian trip, going through Europe, and then back here. We'll okay. see what happens. Awesome. Uh, got any sponsors you want to thank? I need to thank Tasmania. Without them, I wouldn't be here. And thanks, Yossi, Avery, perfect people, perfect support. Awesome. All right, thanks so much for your time, Simon. Yeah, sure. All right, guys. That's the end of the second round. Uh, Paul's in the lead by three or Philo. Uh, Patrick Blazak played really well, as long with uh, Brian Vaji. Uh, Simon, not too bad. Uh, Kyle and Nico kind of fell off the uh, second lead card. And uh, that's going to bring us to our third round. And we are starting off on hole one. It's that big dog leg left with the Mandy. See the basket over there, over the goal. And uh, Paul McBeth is going to start us off. Throwing that backhand hyzer. This one's a little high. Uh, it still works really well. Philo is up next. Hangs it out a little wide, it looks like. Oh, gets an unfortunate tree kick. And up next is uh, Patrick Blazak. He's a DD Latitude 64 sponsored. Or sorry, Latitude 64 sponsored throws uh, all Trilogy plastic, and he throws a really nice backhand right there. He might be DD sponsored too. I should really look that shot up. <laughs> Brian Vaggi with his drive, and he hung it out a little wide, um, but did stay in bounds at least. And Simon Lee's out. Look at that super slow run up, tons of snap. He skips around that tree, no problem. For a pretty nice drive. Uh, looking at Paul's birdie putt here. And not a bad way to start off the round. <laughs> Unreal. Oh, Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> that was a dude. Tell him this one's for him. I will. I don't know if you caught that. He was, he was dedicating this forehand to Kevin Estrada. <laughs> My forehand homie. Partner in Central Coast Disc Golf Crime. Oh, gets it uh, over the OB. He's going to have a pretty look. Philo rips out a pretty good forehand as well. I'm not going to see a finish, but he's also looking at a pretty putt. And yeah, here it is. And that's Philo, so he bangs that. Paul try and match. Paul Macbeth doesn't miss putts. On to hole three. Looks like Philo's lining up for that. Big uh, Sky Annie shot again. 
And you can see it crash to the trees, and that's a pretty nice shot. I think everybody got a birdie on that one. And we're on to hole four. This is that dog leg right, really, really uphill. And uh, if you remember last round, Paul McBeth parked it with the Casey Pro Rock, and he almost aced that, <laughs> but still parked it. On hole four, or sorry, five. And this is that island hole. Uh, OB off to the right the whole way. And Patrick is going to take a cool line, which I hadn't seen anybody else taken take yet. And that was a really nice drive. It's a cool line because it gives you that look right there where you don't have to throw over the rocks. Let's see what Philo had to deal with on his second shot. Whew, lucky to stay in bounds right there. Onto that big par, uh, par four, yep. And Macbeth again, crushing a huge Sky Annie. And this one, I don't believe, come came back. Actually went over into the right fairway, over that fairway, hit a telephone pole, and kicked back into the middle of the fairway. <laughs> World champing it right there. Uh, we're going to Philo's second shot. Just got to throw a big hyzer. Basket's off to the left there, and yeah, it gets in pretty, pretty well. Gonna have a birdie putt. Simon has a pretty uh, similar look to Philo. Booms it up there. Yeah, really nice shot. So you can see where Paul finished on his drive. Unreal. And he's throwing Nova at it. Yeah, beautiful up. Philo's birdie putt here. Just short. Simon with his. Uh, no problem. Really nice upshot from Simon. You can see where Paul finished. He tapped that in. And uh, skip seven, round eight. And Paul's going to throw a huge uh, Sky Annie fuck shot again. This is that big par four. Got to get around the Mando tree. Or Mando pole, I guess. And I think see Paul finish there. Clears the Mando, no problem, because he's McBeast. And he makes beasted it. Simon. He throws real far too. Like real far. God, what a bomb. Philo taking the route the mortals take. Oh, hit that rock. Came up a little short. See where uh, Paul finished. He's got his eagle look. And that's Simon's disc off to the right. Woo, Paul almost made that. I'll uh, skip it on to hole nine. It's that dog leg right, and Paul throws a sick Annie at it, which is an instant replay of round two, and he's parked again. He's got that pop top destroyer to lock down. He told me he lost his star max he, max he was using for a forehand, so now he's using the uh, star destroyer. Watch the mat again. See the mat move again? Ah, uh, gotta get that fixed. Ooh, Simon's Annie does not come back. I think he managed to save par from there, though. And here we are coming to the next hole. Coming back, another 500-foot par 4. Simon dialed this one in. See, so bombed it out there, and he finished about, what, 12 feet short of the basket? There he is right there. 10 feet short. Look at that eagle putt. <laughs> Man, that kid throws really If you ever chance to go watch Simon or Paul or any of these big guys throw, you got to go do it. It's simply amazing. Paul throws that big sky ante, but... Get, since he told me the wind caught that one, and he actually went all the way to the right OB, so this is going to be his par putt. And that was a Star Destroyer for anybody, anybody wondering. I did, so I asked him. Oh, cheat out for par. On to hole 14, uh, Brian Vaggie's on the box. And he throws what I think is probably the best shot on this, which is a, an Annie backhand. And have it slide right up the basket. Beautiful drive. And he, he banged that, no problem. On to hole 15, it's that par four. Or sorry, that dog leg right that Simon just throws over because he can. And there you can see it finish. Philo throwing the backhand again. Probably hit, hoping he hits that same rock he did yesterday. And he piped it right up the middle. And that's going to give him a pretty putt. 
Here's where Paul finished after a forehand. And Paul Pegman. Not surprising. Philo to try to match the bird. Yeah. Ooh, nice bite. That'll bring us to a hole. What is this? Oh, I skipped 17. And this is the one with the island pin again. And Paul's going for it again. Ooh, slow down. Oh. Oh, rolled out of bounds right there. It's going to have a look to save par, though. And I believe Simon's going to opt for that big hyzer line again. Yep. You remember, he came up short when he tried this yesterday. Today, not so much. <laughs> Almost parked. Beautiful drive from Simon. Oh, and Paul saves three. Real nice right there. And we're looking at Simon's birdie putt. No worries there. And that's bringing us to hole 18. This is that double Mando again? Big dog leg left. Gonna go right of our left of the tele telephone pole, right of the tree. And Philo, looks like he got cut up in that tree a little bit, but still had a pretty nice drive. And we're looking at Brian Vachi's drive. He's a local. Gotta th throwing that out there. And uh, uh Philo's pretty local status too. Brian has a really nice drive here. Puts it pretty much the perfect spot. And I believe looking at Philo for a three. Nice bird. And uh, that's going to be the round, end of round three. Paul and Beth kind of ran, ran away with this thing. And uh, Philo and Kyle are going to battle it out for second in our final nine. Uh, Nico finished fourth. Brian Badgey fifth. Simon Law leaves up, tied for fifth. And uh, Steve and uh, Jeff Sporer back there. And our final nine kind of skips around a little bit, but we are starting off on hole one. Big dog leg left, got to throw to the right of that big mando tree. Big beast throws a pretty decent shot. Should be an easy par from there. He's got a nine stroke lead, so he's, <laughs> he's probably not pushing it too crazy. Philo's drive a little far to the right. Not terrible. See the basket way off to the left. This is a tough bird. Kyle and Paul did it, but not easy to do. And uh, they're really good. <laughs> Kyle with his drive looks really good. Oh, yeah. Look at that tree. I think it was hunting. I skip it ahead to hole three. And this is Kyle's third shot, his birdie putt. And he, it's a hundred footer. He was down by, down by a stroke to Philo, and Philo is pretty much parked for a three-two. So he really wanted that. That was a beautiful putt. So here, here's Philo to try and match that three. Oh no, Philo! Ah, skip it ahead. Here is Philo for a three. Oh, brutal chain out again. <laughs> I love a team in the crowd even after a bad miss. Gotta love the guy. Uh, he and Kyle tie that on that. And here is Kyle to take the lead. And he does. What a nice hole. And uh, that's gonna bring us to what is this hole eight? It's that big part four. Dog leg left. It's gonna throw right around the Mando. And Kyle decides to put on his big boy pants and throw the Macbeth and uh <laughs> Lee Zot shot. And he unfortunately comes up a little short. But the drop zone actually isn't that isn't that terrible. And uh, Philo is going to opt for the low route. I'm looking pretty good, but you just needed to get a little bit of fade, and that went so deep in that bush. Yeah, <laughs> that's Philo in that bush, and he was in there for a little bit figuring something out. But he figured out a pretty nice shot. That was a forehand roller. Comes up about 30 short, but that. Not bad at all from where he was. And he's, there's where Paul landed. Another huge bomb. <laughs> Another birdie. And uh, here's Philo for bird. Try to get a stroke back on Kyle. And tie them up again. Oh, just to the left. 
And we're skipping ahead to hopefully this whole ten. Maybe nine. Yeah, this whole nine. And Paul Macbeth throws the same shot he did the last two rounds, probably three, and parked it again. Uh, the other two guys parred onto hole 12. And look at that gallery. It was one of the biggest galleries I've seen in a disc golf tournament. It was really cool. Met a lot of CCDG fans. It was totally awesome. Thanks for saying hi, everybody. And Kyle's drive. This is the one with the OB short. He might have been playing a little safe with the one-stroke lead, but leaves it out there. And uh, obviously this Philo totally pumped up the crowd. It was awesome. <laughs> that was some fun during the final nine. Gotta love it. What a gamer. Looks like he's throwing a champ rock through here. Hangs this out there. It might be a little tight. Get down. Ooh. Oh. Caught kind of nasty skippy. Stay in bounds though. So this is for Bird. Oh, it comes up just short. So Kyle keeps his uh, one stroke lead. On to hole 14. Uh, dog leg right. Got to throw a left around that Mando. And Philo throws a champ T Bird and pretty much parks it. Beautiful looking drive. <laughs> Crap, I got one. That's no <laughs> See if I can make a putt now. So here he is, his bird to try to tie Kyle. And another chain out, Philo. No. Oh, buddy. Uh, crooked basket, man. Look at that thing. And that's going to bring us to our last hole. Hole 18. Uh, double Mando, dog leg left. Kyle throwing that champ gator. I still can't believe that's a gator. <laughs> Philo looks like he's trying to make up that stroke on Kyle, puts a little little gusto on it, makes both Mandos. But that's actually not the best place to be. There's kind of more trees if you go along. Um, I see it looks like Kyle's second shot. And he gives himself a look for three, putting the pressure back on Philo because you know he's definitely got a four if he wants it. So Philo really needs to get up and down from here. Force Kyle to make that putt. And... Uh, Tag the tree right there, came up short. So this is for three. He's going to be running it. I need another tree again. There he is tapping in five. You know, so that means Kyle can tap in his four, no problem. You see there's Kyle tapping in a four. Getting second place. Philo got third. You see Moresco spotting right there. And there's your champ, Paul Macbeth. Somebody told me he was three-time champ now. Three in a row. Yeah. Win one by like ten strokes, something like that. Nine or ten strokes. UC taking pictures of the, of the gang. Really impressive performance. Avery Jenkins spotting. They caught up with Paul here. Good, there were some players out here for sure. Uh, you know, I know Nico came in from Northern California, yeah. Kyle, Philo, Steve Rico, you know, there's, there's some top names so out Simon here. Simon was playing great too. Simon too, yeah, came out from Germany. Good throws cool. far, man. He's going to be ripping money in the distance. Yep. Yeah. Any holes going to be trump out here? Or? Yeah, actually, I finally birdied it in the final nine. Uh, Really impressive performance. It's awesome watching you play all weekend. Yeah, yeah. Really inspiring. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for your time and uh, thank your sponsors for sure. Yeah, of course. End of a champion this, um, grit bags and crushed gloves. All right, here for Central Coast. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you around. Thank you. Yeah. All right, you're here for Central Coast. with Kyle Ekman, second place, the winter time open. Yeah, pretty solid performance, man. Um, didn't start off all solid, but <laughs> yeah. you know it was a rough battle. First round went well, middle round was the haze, yeah. and then uh, last round put it together, That's jumped cool. from the third card up to third place. So final nine, and then how the final nine go, man? Final nine was something else, too. Yeah, you and Philo bowling out there for a second? Yeah, he had me by one. Um, I actually got a really good putt on the third hole there. So I oh, that was huge, man. What is a 100 footer, probably? I, At least. I didn't know what I was thinking. It <laughs> through my head. I just I wanted to throw it, and I threw it. That was beautiful, so, man. That was a great putt. Cool. Uh, any uh, holes you liked out there, challenging holes, holes you changed up throughout the tournament? Well, um, I had a layup. I didn't have to. I chose a layup on 18. 
Um, that hole, I took a three, uh -huh. all three rounds. Wow, that's impressive. So, that is a tough yeah. hole. Double Mando, right? Double Mandy with a nice you know, little left there. So, yeah, pretty happy about this all solid. Cool, man. You want to pick your sponsors? Who you got? Uh, yeah, I got a Nova Disc and West Coast Disc Golf. That's one of the two sponsors out there, cool. so looking for more. Cool, man. Thanks for time and congrats on the performance, dude. Kill, okay. Killing it out there. <laughs> and I also caught up with that Alex Johnson. You know, they, they tend to be the same at OG every time I come. I, I tend to shoot in the mid to low 60s, and it's always frustrating, but yet I love it every time. Um, <laughs> Thanks for filming, you guys. I appreciate it big time. You guys, yeah. you guys rock and put out the videos and make people happy if they're not able to see the course to be able to at least feel like they're there. Um, well, thanks for watching. Big hi to man. my wife and kids back home in Denver. It's nice to be in the sun in California. <laughs> Central Disc Golf. Nice right on. All right, guys. That is it for the uh, 2014 Wintertime Open Recap vid. I have. We'll have full round coverage coming up. I had. I covered the first first round. Uh, single cam, second round, dual cam, thanks to uh, CCDG homie Alex Perez. And third round and final nine are dual cam, and I filmed with my buddy Derek Curdy. Huge thanks to him. And uh, it should be awesome. Up next is the NorCal series. Got the commentaries done. I just need to do the finishing editing. We'll have those up, and then I'll start editing the Wintertime Open. And uh, Kevin and uh, Derek and I will uh, do some commentary, and we'll bust it out. Should be awesome. And uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you around.